Tonight on American Perspectives, the story of Marian Anderson, 70 years after the famed opera singer's concert at the Lincoln Memorial. Actress Fran Drescher talks about her career and cancer. In my own tenacious way, I decided that I was going to write a book and I was going to tell everybody my story. That book became Cancer Schmansa. And when I, it became a New York Times bestseller, I'm proud to say. And uh, when I uh, went on my book tour and I spoke to tens of thousands of people, I realized that what happened to me has happened to many, 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 many Americans. Also, Winston Churchill III talks about U.S.-British relations. That's tonight on American Perspectives. In 1979, America's cable companies created C-SPAN as a public service. Now, 30 years later, C-SPAN continues as the political network of record, bringing you the three C-SPAN television networks, C-SPAN Radio, and cspan.org. This morning we'll talk with Michael Shifter from the Inter-American Dialogue about this weekend Summit of the Americas. And New York Times national security reporter Eric Lischblau talks about his report that the NSA intercepted American email messages and phone calls beyond the limits established by Congress. In the next hour, Darren Good of Congress Daily looks at the future of high-speed rail and in a couple of hours, Aaron Smith from Pew Internet and American Life Project examines Internet usage in the 2008 campaign. Washington Journal is next. Good morning. It's Saturday, April 18th, 2009. President Barack Obama this weekend is gathering with Western Hemisphere leaders for the Fifth Summit of Americas. Here's what the president had to say Friday at the opening ceremony. Aged, and at times we've sought to dictate our terms. But I pledge to you that we seek an equal partnership. There's no, there's no senior partner and junior partner in our relations. There's simply engagement based on mutual respect and common interests and shared values. So I'm here to launch a new chapter of engagement that will be sustained throughout my administration. The Summit of Americas is taking place in the Port of Spain, the capital of Trinidad and Tobago, this weekend. And here to help us discuss that gathering is Michael Shifter, Vice President for Policy at the Inter-American Dialogue. Let's begin with this uh, front-page photo of the New York Times this morning. President Barack Obama greeting Hugo Chavez of Venezuela in Trinidad on Friday at this uh, summit gathering. What is the significance of this photo and this handshake? <laughs> Well, this is uh, what everybody was waiting for. Uh, this is the big moment of the summit. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, tension between the United States and Venezuela, especially with President Bush and President Chavez, a lot of back and forth, some pretty aggressive language. Uh, and the question was, uh, what, would, what would happen when President Obama met President Chavez? And so there was a lot of expectations about that. And clearly, this was a, a cordial uh, 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 greeting, exchange. Uh, doesn't mean that relations are back on, on a great track. It doesn't mean detente, but it does mean that, uh, an opportunity, an opening to try to uh, put relations, to try to lower the tension and the strain between the two countries. You talk about uh, past language between Venezuela's uh, leader and the United States. When you go back to 2005 at the Summit of Americas, this is Time Magazine's piece. It says that thanks to rising oil prices, the Venezuelan president then, who controls the hemisphere's largest crude reserve, suddenly had the petrol wherewithal to spread his gospel of a more socialist Latin America free of Washington's imperialist interference. You go back to 2006, where Chavez called uh, President Bush the devil, and he also last month referred to President Obama as ignorant. So are we seeing a shift 
from the Venezuelan well, leader? I wouldn't get too uh, excited. I think there's, uh, the Venezuelan leader uh, has a reputation for being a bit erratic, uh, inconsistent, and he has been frustrated by President Obama because this isn't the kind of president he expected from the United States. President Obama is very appealing, uh, very popular, and uh, President Chavez has, has been using tough language, but also some nice language, and uh, he's trying to sort of get a hold of President Obama. So. Uh, this is a good moment. Uh, I think we can try to hope that we can build on this, but uh, I think to be a realistic looking at President Chavez's language over the last decade, uh, I would suspect that we're going to see, uh, again, him reverting to some pretty tough language later on. When you say grow on this, how, do, how does the United States grow on this uh, handshake? Well, for, the far, for starters, we have no ambassador. The United States doesn't have an ambassador in Venezuela. Venezuela doesn't have an ambassador in Washington. Uh, they were expelled uh, several months ago, late last year, and uh, Venezuela is a major uh, oil supplier to the United States, so we have uh, quite good economic commercial relations, but we don't even have ambassadorial presence. So that would be a way to build on this, this handshake, to at least talk about how to get ambassadors back, and then perhaps pursue some other areas of, of cooperation. Uh, there's, very, there's such profound distrust that's developed over the last several years that I think uh, there, is a, there is, I think, an opportunity to repair uh, some of the damage. Mr. Obama, yesterday, President Obama also talked about Cuba. He's been saying he had some, several comments and several steps that he's taken uh, on Cuba in the last few days. In the New York Times this morning, Obama declares U.S. will pursue thaw with Cuba and calls for a new beginning. Uh, and it says that Mr. Obama's remarks during the opening ceremony at the Summit of Americas are the clearest signal in decades that the United States is willing to change direction in its dealings with Cuba. They capped a dizzying series of developments this week, including surprisingly warm words between Ra Raul Castro, Cuba's leader, and Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. What do you make of that? Well, I think uh, there is an opening, there is a shift, but I think uh, it may not happen as quickly as uh, a lot of people expect. I think President Obama is going to move very cautiously uh, and to see what the response of the Cuban government is. Uh, Raul Castro did make that statement, but he made it in the context of quite a, an aggressive, defiant meeting against the United States. So I think we have to be uh, careful. I think the United States should begin to talk to the Cuban government. I think the United States wants to do that. But again, there's, we have five decades of uh, tremendous animosity and mistrust, and it's going to take a long time to chip away at, at a very, very tough uh, policy of the embargo. The New York Times this morning notes this. Cuba is not on the official agenda here. Indeed, Cuba, ha which has been barred from the Organization of American States since 1962, is not even on the guest list. But leaders in the hemisphere have spent months planning to make Cuba an issue here. What will they be talking about when it comes to Cuba this weekend? Well, they, they, they're very critical of the U.S. embargo. The, the, uh, Cuba was suspended from the Organization of American States in 1962. Uh, in that, when they were expelled, they, were, they talked about the axis of the Soviet Union and China. Uh, so this is something that's an anachronism, and they feel that President Obama should say, you know, we're in a new era, and let's lift the embargo, let's deal with Cuba. They're, they're concerned about human rights and democracy as well, but clearly the embargo hasn't worked, so try something else. So there's a lot of pressure. This has been a source of irritation between U.S. Latin American relations for many, many years. All of the other government president, this president at this summit, have relations with Cuba except the United States. For our viewers who want to call in with a question or a comment, if you're a Republican, dial 202-737-0001. Democrats, 202-737-0002. And independents, all others, 202-628-0205. Get your questions here in just a minute. We showed you the front page of the New York Times this morning. Here's a Venezuelan paper this morning and their headline uh, about the gathering and that handshake between President Obama and the leader of Venezuela. Chavez. And their headline is, Chavez to Obama, I want to be your friend. And here is the uh, New York Daily News this morning, or the New York Post, excuse me, their headline, Bam, in dramatic overture to Obama, seeks new beginning with foe and gives Ugo a hand, too. First phone call here, Richmond, Virginia. Tony joins us on the Democrats line. Good morning, Tony. Hello, Mr. Shifter. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, uh, it's kind of interesting to listen to you because I'm... Um, I kind of um, pay quite a bit of attention to Venezuela. I get global issues here in the United States, and I have, that allows me the opportunity to listen to Chavez speak in an extensive amount of time. It's not five-minute sound bites. 
I don't see Chavez as, ira uh, as erratic in any way. I see him as pretty well-spoken and has a very good understanding of what's going on. I think the difference between him and, and the way other politicians work is he's very blunt about how he feels. And I think in the United States, people have a very difficult time understanding that. Also, I think with regard to the United States and Latin America, there's a shift going on throughout all of Latin America. And the United States is going to have to realize and deal with that reality, whether they like it or not. The United, the United States has to realize the countries are realigning themselves, and they're going to make sure that they can realign themselves in a manner in which they can create blocks. Even people in the United States will say, well, hey, you've got Brazil acting one way in Chile. They're still united in the overall cause. Hey, they, Tony, let me jump in here. When you say that countries are realigning themselves, so what, what do you mean? Well, let's look at, let's look at all of the uh, agreements that are taking place throughout Latin America in which now they're going outside the scope of the U.S. They're going to China, they're going abroad, they're, they're realigning themselves in the manner in which they do business. Before it was one way, everything went north. Now, you, now most of Latin America is becoming very aware we have to shift the way we deal with markets, and we have to shift the way we deal with our politics. All right. Mr. Shifter. Yeah, well, I, I think the, uh, the, the uh, Tony makes an excellent point. I think Latin America is uh, part of the world. Uh, it's not the backyard of the United States anymore. It has alliances uh, throughout the world, and I think uh, President Chavez is part of that and taking advantage of that. Uh, I think this is very positive. Uh, but there's a difference, I think, between President Chavez and some of the other leaders who are doing this, like the president of Brazil, who is also a man of the left, who is also uh, expanding relationships. Uh, president Chavez has been quite belligerent in some of the language. And the erratic refers to, if you look at the statements about President Obama since President Obama uh, assumed office, uh, some of them in, have been very, very tough, and some of them have been very, very soft. And so it's hard to see. He seems to be quite contradictory about how he feels about uh, President Obama. The other leaders have made statements that have been a little bit more consistent. So I think uh, President Chavez is a slightly uh, a special case compared to some of the other Latin American leaders. Well, then what does that mean about negotiations this weekend or, or talks this weekend and going forward? Well, it just means that there has to be, there has to be some sort of uh, a meeting of the minds to get on the same track. And I think President Chavez was used to bashing President Bush. That was easy. Uh, he was a great foil, President Bush, for, for, for President Chavez. Obama is is very different character, so they really have to figure out how to how, how, how to move forward and de and deal with him. And I think this is going to be tough for President Chavez. His reflex is to attack the United States in a very sometimes in a very belligerent way. President Obama talked yesterday at the opening ceremonies about moving forward and what the Americans need to hear. Let's listen to what he had to say, and we'll come back and talk about it. The United States will be willing to acknowledge past errors where. Those errors have been made. We will be partners in helping to alleviate poverty. But the American people have to get some positive reinforcement if they are to be engaged in the efforts to lift other countries uh, out of the poverty that they're experiencing. Michael Shifter, uh, Americans need positive reinforcement. What What is the Obama administration looking for here from countries like Cuba and Venezuela? Well, I think the, the, the message there is that there, there is, this is a community of democracies uh, in Latin America, and uh, the governments have made a commitment to, to democracy, uh, and they should fulfill those commitments. Uh, there are serious concerns about, uh, about democracy in those countries, and I think President Obama is saying we're willing to do our part, uh, but you have to also uh, fulfill the commitments that you've made. And uh, there are political prisoners in, in Cuba and, and the like. And, and so we have to sort of talk about this and move together. And we're happy to act differently and behave differently. But that requires uh, a difference, a change of behavior on your part as well. Well, beyond prisoners in Cuba, you have the human rights issues as, as well, which Fidel Castro did not want to talk about in the past, but has recently indicated that he may with the United States. There's, what are the other issues there that, um, that the Castro regime needs to move on? Well, uh, there's no elected Castro. Raul Castro is right. not elected, which is why he's not invited to, to the summit. That, that was, this was just for elected leaders in the hemisphere. Uh, President Chavez is elected. So that's, that's the difference uh, between the two. Uh, but I think certainly opening freedom of the press uh, there's no press freedom, uh, really, uh, in Cuba. Uh, people don't have a right to sort of express their views, uh, to associate, to challenge the government, and that's part of 
uh, our concept of, uh, of a democracy. Uh, what I think President Obama wants to do is to bring, is to engage Cuba to try to see if they could move it in that direction, not make this democratic change a precondition for talking, but an objective, something to achieve down the road. All right, Patrick on the Republican line from Mesquite, Nevada. Good morning, Patrick. How are you doing? Go ahead, sir. Um, I do believe uh, completely with uh, Barack Obama going into Cuba. It's about time, honestly. I'm 23 years old, and I'm a younger generation. We've been seeing political politics from our parents. We've seen it from our grandparents. And so it's about time that we have a president that's actually been able to get rid of this old Cold War idea. Mr. Shifter, is it a Cold War idea? Yes, I think it is. I think it goes back uh, to the early 1960s, and uh, I think it is something that uh, the, the caller, 23 years old, even Cuban Americans who are of his generation, uh, have really changed their view. Uh, the older generation, the ones that came to uh, Miami uh, in the early 1960s as exiles, have been driving the politics. And now you have a new generation coming in, and they have different ideas. They're more open. They don't have that experience uh, of, of the Cuban Revolution. Uh, and so uh, they want to move on. And uh, they recognize that this hasn't worked. Uh, we've had 50 years of an, of an experiment. The experiment hasn't worked. And so it's time to try other uh, approaches. Marietta, Georgia, Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning, Gladia and Mr. Schiffer. Uh, my comment is that I I am proud of President Obama that he's willing to rethink the Cuba our Cuba's relationship because I think that him allowing the Cuban Americans to go visit their family and send money is admirable and I think that's the first step. But also I would like for him to go a step further and allow all of us Americans to travel to Cuba than anywhere else we would like to go. And I also are to me our whole policy with Cuba just was just hypocritical because we say that our policy is because of they're not a democracy, they're not freedom, they don't allow freedom for their their uh, for their people. But also, we do trade with China. What is the difference? China doesn't have freedom for their people either, and I'm pretty sure that they also have political prisoners as well. Well, those are excellent, excellent points. Uh, I think the China hypocrisy issue is, is a valid one. Uh, the, 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 the question is that there is uh, a big element of domestic politics in Cuba policy. There's a very uh, significant, active uh, Cuban-American community, and they have been pressing very, very hard. And so uh, China is a big country, uh, Cuba is a small country, and so we, the United States can't afford not to trade with China. Uh, they're just too significant. In Cuba, this is a way that they can send, try to send a message and I think try to punish uh, uh, Cuba, the Fidel Castro regime. I don't think it's worked, but I think that, that's the explanation for that. And uh, on the other point, I think that the caller is exactly right. There is a contradiction that Cuban Americans can now go back and forth, they can send money, they have they have freedom to, to move, but other Americans don't. So it's not a sustainable policy, I don't think, in the long run. And I think the con in the Congress there are bills in the House and the Senate to open travel for all Americans, not just Cuban Americans. What's the political reality that those bills pass and that goes through? I think it's too early to tell, but I think they have a significant number of signers in both, in both houses of Congress. Uh, President Obama has not uh, stated his position yet on that bill, but I think that there's some momentum, and I think the initial announcement uh, could pave the way for an opening towards travel, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be controversial and more conflictive. Irita on the Democrats line joins us from Lansing, Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I love C-SPAN. I would have to agree with the first two callers, but I do want to say I'm glad Obama's, Mr. Obama or President Obama, whichever way you want to address him, I find it um, much more acceptable to call him President Obama, which I've heard Greta throughout the morning this morning calling him Mr. Obama or Obama. And I, I think that's disrespectful, especially for the host. But anyways, getting back to my point, I think it's wonderful that he's extending a hand to Chavez and to Cuba and to all the Americans. And I believe that he will keep an, an eerie eye out, make sure that everyone is, is uh, giving him a straight sh shot. And if not, he will recognize that he has some smart people in his cabinet, and he's a very intelligent man. And I believe that that um, he will lead us in the right direction. All right, let's hear from Scott on the Republican.
in Big Sandy, Texas. Yes, Mr. Schechter. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, we're supposed to become more like these uh, Latin American socialists or communists in order to get along with them. I, I don't. Uh, I don't understand this. You know, it sounds like sounds like we just need to to get along and become more like them and and do away with capitalism and uh, accept their socialism. Is that, is that what you're proposing or what Obama is down there trying to, uh, to let them know? Well, thank you for the question. I, I, uh, I think uh, capitalism is, uh, is thriving in, in Latin America. Uh, and uh, and uh, if you look at all of these countries, uh, uh, Brazil, the biggest country, led by a leader of the left, but certainly somebody who uh, uh, is a major dynamic capitalist economy, Chile as well, um, this is not uh, this is not uh, socialism. In fact, uh, uh, you know, the United States I think has uh, uh, has something to learn from some of the Latin American countries that have practiced uh, fiscal discipline, uh, good management of their economies. The United States uh, has uh, had some problems in that area, which has caused the economic downturn. So Latin Americans are saying, you know, we did everything right uh, according to good capitalist management. Uh, the United States uh, is now uh, having some problems and we're suffering the, the effects. So um, these are, w if it's socialism, it's because they want to uh, help the poor. Uh, the Latin Americans, uh, Latin America is the most unequal continent in the world. Uh, there is considerable poverty, uh, but the market is still strong and, uh, and these leaders that are convening in Trinidad and Tobago are committed to that. We're also Twittering here on Washington Journal. If you want to send us a tweet, go to twitter.com and uh, go to C-SPAN WJ, and you can send us a tweet for Michael Shifter, and we can read that on air to him as well. Caldwell, New Jersey. John joins us on the Democrats line. Good morning, John. Good morning. I'd just like to ask the host what he thinks John Kennedy would do in this situation, and also I'd like to ask when is Texas going to secede? you have a response to that? John Kennedy. John Kennedy. I think that's what he said. John Kennedy. I yeah. Did. Well, I, John Kennedy was. A, I mean, some people uh, in America uh, see Obama as another Kennedy. Those who are old enough to remember, uh, because he does. He is very appealing and, and uh, is seen as sort of a, sort of a new beginning, as John Kennedy did. The difference was uh, John Kennedy uh, was a different period. And, and the United States was uh, much more influential, much stronger. The Latin America was uh, a lot weaker economically, politically. And now, as President Obama said uh, in his speech uh, yesterday, uh, we have to deal with each other as equals, as partners. Uh, that wasn't the case with John Kennedy. He announced the Alliance for Progress, which was helping uh, Latin America. It was a little bit, had, a, had more of a paternalistic uh, sort of ring to it. Those days are over. The reality is, has changed a lot. Okay. Tommy from Jackson, Tennessee, on the independent line. Uh, yes, um, I'd like to uh, ask a question about the uh, about the human rights issue uh, in Central America. Um, I believe that women's rights are human rights, and uh, are they being addressed? And, and 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 should they be addressed? Thank you. Well, women's rights is a big issue in Latin America and Central America and all of South America. Um, I think there's been some progress made, but there's a lot more that, that, need to, that needs to happen. And there's a, the, a lot of the statistics that one hears uh, uh, are, are very worrying. Uh, there is an Inter-American Human Rights Commission that has made women's rights a high priority. So they're working on that. There have been a lot of investigations, reports, and the like. Uh, so I think it's better, but still a significant problem. A little history of the uh, Summit of Americas for you this morning. The first summit was held in Miami in 1994, and it was started by former President Bill Clinton. 34 democratically elected leaders from the Western Hemisphere attend the summit. Atlanta, Georgia, Democrats line. Good morning, Harry. Uh, good morning to you both. Uh, Mr. Schiffer, um, I would like to tell you that all weekend long I've been listening to the different uh, stations and no one's really been telling the truth about what really happened uh, in, in the 60s with the relationship of uh, Cuba to America. And it, it's simply that um, uh, the, the, the Cuban government or the Cuban people were being overrun by the uh, organized crime and, and other organizations which left out a large, the largest part of the uh, Cuban people and there was a separation of rich, poor, and white and black. 
And uh, so when when Castro saw the situation in Havana, in Cuba, and decided to do something about it, his, his, his terminology was, what are they doing to my people? And when he came to Cuba and decided to do something about it, the most of the rich whites, along with Batista and all the influential um, um, crime lords, ran from Cuba. You might have seen a part of the uh, Godfather show they put together that night, that evening when Castro came aboard that um, the, 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 the element started running, and they, they got together in Miami, and uh, they still exist and still having influence over Cuba. Now, the situation there is plainly political. Uh, what happened was America got mad with Cuba, and they took their ball and, 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 and ran home. Michael Shifter? Well, I, I think uh, clearly there was enormous uh, discontent, uh, what the caller describes as accurate, in the 1950s, and that's the reason why uh, Fidel Castro came to power. That's why he was very popular uh, and, and why he had a lot of support. Uh, the question is, you know, he's been there for 50 years, and I think uh, the results are, are, are questionable, certainly in terms of political freedom, but also the economy. Uh, you know, people are not doing well in Cuba. And so uh, over the long run, you have to create an alternative that can deliver uh, to people. And, uh, and also, you know, there is a, a concern about democracy, that they have... Uh, that elections are important, that people should have to decide, that people have the uh, ability to decide who is going to rule them. And so that hasn't happened in Cuba. I think the, the, the reasons for the revolution, I think, are well described. But I think in terms of what Fidel Castro has represented uh, for the country and what he's been able to produce, uh, I think, are, 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 are much more questionable. On the economy, what approach will the United States take with Latin America when you have so many different countries and so many different economies in in these different countries. This is the um, the, the uh, Yahoo News on President Obama and the Summit of the Americas, and it's this was written by Abraham Lowenthal, and it says the first is the degree of democratic demographic and economic inter interdependence with the United States, highest and still growing in Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean, lowest and likely to remain low in South America, and, and especially in the Southern Cone. It says the second dimension is the extent to which the countries have opened their economies to international competition, by far most fully in, in Chile and a great deal in Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Panama, and some Central American nations. Well, I think, I think the United States has to learn to, to deal with Latin America differently. There, there are different Latin Americas. Uh, there have always been differences, but they've become wider. Uh, and, I think, uh, and I think there are opportunities in Brazil and Chile that there wouldn't be in uh, Bolivia and Ecuador and other countries. And I think uh, the United States has to be sensitive to that and adjust. And I think uh, we can do that. There, there's, there's a very diverse uh, universe out there, and there's no reason why we can't have good relations with all of them, but obviously some uh, deserve more uh, priority attention than others. Lewis, on the Republican line from Vicksburg, Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I don't know. I don't think we ought to take him down there. And, and all that's going to happen is he's, we're going to receive a bunch of money from the United States. It's just going to help to prop up uh, the present government down there. And that's all it's going to do. They aren't going to leave there. I don't think you're ever going to see many communists that are going to bail out of a country. Uh, they control the people the way they want to control them. And I don't think it's going to uh, do a bit of good. Thank you. Is there a, a pledge of money? Well, the United States doesn't have a lot of money uh, to give at this point. Uh, there's going to be some support because a lot of Americans are going through a bad, a bad period, and uh, they've pledged some microfinance programs and other programs. I don't think it's it's very, very significant. Uh, I think those days are over. The United States coming to these meetings and pledging pledging money, uh, but I think uh, there's certainly interest in opening the U.S. markets and trying to figure out how to how to get Latin America through this very, very difficult period and working through some of the multilateral financial institutions, so that's going to get an emphasis uh, at the meeting. Chip joins us from Athens, Georgia on the Democrats line. Hi, thanks. Um, I just want to say that even though I'm a Democrat, I listen to a lot of right-wing radio, and to address something an earlier caller said, who he said, why don't we just become socialist or whatever, I just want to say that honestly, Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh have been just selling a bill of goods to their listeners for years in terms of how they describe America's history of taxation, et cetera. And, for example, they try to say that FDR's plan to get us out of the Depression didn't work at all and that only World War II saved us from the Depression. But World War II was social spending, too, just like FDR's plans were for work plans were 
social spending. So was World War II. And we paid for World War II. Like right now, our tax rate is 35% for rich people. But all during the 40s, to pay for World War II and to pay for uh, FDR's plans, our tax rates went up to 88% for rich people. And then all the way through the 40s and the 50s and into the 60s, our tax rates were 94% for rich people to help pay for all that. So it's not like we're turning towards some sort of super socialist thing and taxing people higher than we have before. We had to tax them way higher to pay for those things. And I blog at superleft.blogspot.com, and I have this at Tax Facts for Hanitized Ditto Heads at superleft.blogspot. All Thanks. right, we'll leave it there. Mr. Shifter, any thoughts on well, what? Well, just ta taxation is an important issue in Latin America as well. Uh, and and they really, there hasn't been as, as, as good enforcement as there should be. The tax laws are a little bit lax. There are people with a lot of money in Latin America that haven't paid their share, and they should be uh, to try to sustain the social spending and make the countries a little bit more equal. What issues will the leaders discuss over the weekend that impact Americans pocketbooks here? Well, I think one of them is, is, is crime and violence, uh, and it does affect our pocketbooks because it's, it's, uh, if crime and violence is, is very a big problem in Latin America, that means there's not investment, it means there's not growth, it's, it's a big problem for democracy, it's a big problem for the economy, and we'll be talking about that uh, as well. Energy is another one they're going to be talking about, the environment they're going to be talking about. These are big issues uh, that are global issues, but Latin America is now playing a much more important role in these kind of global deliberations. There are five countries from the hemisphere that are part of the G20 meetings in, in London, and so I think this reflects a, 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 new, uh, a new reality. And on President Obama's schedule today, he is, uh, plans to attend the summit sessions on the global economy, energy, and the environment. He'll also take part in the official photograph of the 34 world leaders attending the summit. And then later in the evening, he'll attend a dinner and a cultural show hosted by Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister Patrick Manning. That's the President Obama's schedule for today. We want to thank Michael Shifter for joining us this morning, for helping us discuss this gathering. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. We are going to next going to be talking with Eric.